Hello. I haven't done a Minecraft video for a little while now, since I think last year, really. Um, been busy with other things. But uh, I just started up again. I got a, a new world here. Um, don't have the big towers anymore. And, uh, I'm, you know, basically had that old world saved still, but the start from scratch. Um, and I'm running a different set of add-ons this time around. So I try to stay away from the industrial craft add-ons this time around. And uh, decided to use um, Thermal Expansion and build craft for my power needs instead. So kind of want to show you today here is a managed power system using a few add-ons. So I have it set up over here. So we're using Buildcraft for combustion engines um, with fuel. And we're using thermal expansion here for the uh, energy conduits, as well as the liquid ducts here and the aqueous accumulators. We're also using logistics pipes. Um, the only reason using those is to reduce um, fuel you lose uh, loss when I reconfigure engines or whatever. So I try to keep a, a bucket in each of these. Um, so, you know, I have it set up here to use a fuel bucket. And the last add-on that I am recently using, and you can kind of see it up there, is Mine Factory Reloaded, and it's for the wiring harness. So this is a computer craft supported bundled cable here, which is really nice not to have the, um, you know, the red power requirement to get that now. So that's the setup. Um, I don't really need to show you how logistic pipes work. It's just I have a liquid transposer over here that's keeping this chest full of buckets. Um, and then those get sent through here when they need them. Uh, the configuration I went for this is rather than doing a conduit down the middle and then making a spoke, um, I did this kind of like square setup with two liquid ducts full of water down the middle. And the purpose of that is just so that I could keep these uh, logistic pipes, um, liquid supplier pipes, uh, one a piece on an engine. Otherwise, it would kind of connect to two and then randomly try to fill them up until it got the, the one that actually needed the supply. Um, so this whole system is hooked up to these two engine energy cells and this one here, one here, and that's kind of like the heart of the system. So basically uh, these engines you just saw just turn on. So they'll only turn on when the energy um, in the energy cells drops below a certain limit. So if you look here, um, so we see if, if it drops below a threshold of about 75%, um, then fill it up until it's, you know, greater than or equal to 99%. And we keep track of, like, basically what our charge rate is. So we have a pretty good draw on this system right now. We have a quarry running. Um, so th the engines themselves should be putting out about 120 megajoules per tick. We're getting, I don't know, it'll stabilize around 50 or something. So that's basically the system. Um, what we're using here is, is open peripherals, and it's really neat. You don't have to actually hook anything up to it. Um, you can just get into the, the guts of this thing. So let me uh, go over here and uh, open this puppy up. So we can just uh, you know wrap um, an energy cell. So there's one to the left and to the right of the computer. Um, you know, and they have these nice, this nice helper function called list methods. So uh, I, don't, I don't actually have any peripherals hooked up to this computer, um, except for this one, which is is an open peripheral um, thing. But I'll show you that later. Uh, but I don't need to actually use it to see what's in here. It just automatically um, figures it out. So there's a lot of different things. Uh, the thing that I'd be interested, I've been interested in, in getting here is the power provider. 
And then, uh, oops. I typed something wrong. Yeah, I did. And then you can just kind of look at the different fields you get here. So you can see, you know, this is energy received, the amount stored, how much we actually, or the max energy stored, and how much we actually have stored. So we can actually use that pretty easily in a script, um, which I'll attach to the video, to know when we have to actually turn on the, the engines. And so, you know, we look here, heat's down, so these probably are past the cooldown period, so let's start this up. Um, yeah, so the script uh, has a config file. Uh, you just pick the size that the energy conduits are, so in theory you could have like four of them, five, six of them. Uh, four of them. <laughs> uh, this is the low motor mark, so you know, maybe you want this to be set this to like 50% uh, because I was running into issues with uh, the engines not being cooled off before restarting. Um, this color is actually used on the front here. You see the um, color on this uh, red net cable. It's like white here. I don't have a thing. You can change it to different colors. So right here, you see I changed it to to green, so it wouldn't send a red net signal here. Um, that's all the config is doing. It's just use white. Uh, red net is front, and glasses is this other open peripheral. Um, piece that I'll show you in a second. And that's basically the config. And then start her up and does the right thing. So you know we're charging up here. And uh if I left this for some time, I'm sure you don't want to watch that, but it would stop at ninety nine percent. So the other cool thing is Open Peripheral has this um, thing called a bridge, which you can see here. And uh, what's interesting about the bridge is you can do some real simple things with it. So you can um, actually modify your Minecraft hut. So I spent a couple of minutes and I, I made one up here. And you can see at the top left um, the actual stats that I'm showing in the in in here are showing up on your HUD now. Um, and you can take this off and on, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, which is pretty handy when you're, you know, for example, let's say I'm going to go check out my quarry and I want to make sure, you know, the power is actually on. I can be way over here and, and get like a real time update of, of my power. And, you know, I, it took me like five minutes to set this thing up. I copied, Mikey had like an example gauge. Um, I basically just copied that up and and uh, slapped it together. Not very hard to do at all. And pretty cool feature. Like you can imagine all kinds of different, um, you know, stats, or you can have different goggles, or you can make like a. But probably what all I'm doing is making a generic stats library that all my systems on this new world are going to send through. Um, and you can see we got our quarter in here. All my new systems will send through, and then you know can have a, a crap load of stats. And the other thing that's kind of cool is, um, I don't have it set up, but you can do like a dollar sign some command. And that actually will send, you see how I didn't print it out? That will actually send that to the um, bridge as an event you can use with uh, pull event. And then you can parse the text and actually send commands to this. So I could say, you know, in the future I could say, uh, you know, shut off engines or something. And then, you know, the engines would completely shut off. Or I could say, you know, um, you know, say blow up TNT or something. And then, you know, my buddy Nondless would die a horrible death while he's AFK. Uh, options are limitless. So that is all I really had to show. Um, a nice little dynamic or power system that you can set up with thermal craft really all you need is is thermal craft computer craft open peripheral and thermal craft thermal expansion build craft open peripheral um computer craft 
and then you know you can set up this the system you don't have to use this logistics pipes at all really even this this uh red net is just to keep it nice you could set these engines up in a different configuration that uses red power um, and then using these these battery cells you can actually you know yeah you can actually uh reduce fuel loss and make sure these engines you know are only running when there's a need for them to run and then they can just shut off and, and actually if you think about it by the time that these things almost charge this um, they're only getting to they're probably only going to get to like a thousand heat or 700 heat you can almost run it without water um, all 20 of them I've done a, a similar script where I've, I've had them alternate banks, like one cools off and one starts, but um, it's not really a big deal, though, with these Acumus accumulators, because they don't, you know, consume the source water, so you don't have to have the issue that you get on servers where the waters don't regenerate. Anyways, um, that's it. I'll attach the script on the uh, YouTube video description. Let me know what you think.